I have a torn MCL. It might be fully ruptured. I really don't know. I'll tell you why I'm guessing it might be. And I am not even considering surgery. And here's why. So as some of you know, I injured myself recently. Uh, not doing anything, you know, adventurous or that crazy. I just saw a bear while standing barefoot near a creek, got startled, fell in, twisted my knee, and tore my MCL. Uh, if you want the full story and you haven't actually heard that yet, you can click the link below in the description box. We will link to that video. Uh, but this video is in answer to a question one of you posted actually on that original video of my story where, um, you know, somebody wanted to know, the one question I have for you, Alicia, is why aren't you considering surgery? A lot of athletes get surgery and go on to play their sport better than ever. They recover fast. So why wouldn't you consider surgery? So I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you my thoughts on surgery, uh, which probably carry more weight now that I'm actually injured. You know, it's easy to say I won't consider surgery um, I, unless I, I have no other option. It's easy to say that when I'm not injured, right? Um, and then I think a lot of people maybe change their minds about a stance they have on something or how committed they are to that, uh, that stance, right? When they're injured, because that might change things, but it's not changing that for me. And here's why. Uh, specifically with an MCL tear, what I have heard um, is that even a full rupture can heal on its own, naturally. Isn't that amazing? Our bodies are incredible. And uh, the reason for that is the MCL, which if you don't know, is it's in the knee. So this is a knee injury. Um, but the MCL is a ligament that connects the medial condyle of the femur um, and uh, the, the lower leg. <clears throat> and it's fairly large, larger than the ACL or the meniscus and other ten tendons or ligaments. Um, and it gets a lot of blood. So it has really good blood supply. It's a little bit more um, uh, external than say the L ACL, uh, which is more internal to the knee joint. Uh, so it gets good, good blood supply and you need good blood supply to heal an injury. And when you can get good blood supply to an injury, it can heal, it can repair itself. The body can actually repair itself. So this is something I already knew. It's why I do what I do, releasing fascia, because when you release fascia, you increase blood flow. Um, and not only blood flow, you increase nerve communication, you increase collagen production and hyaluronic acid and all the things that you want when you want to heal an injury. Uh, so that is one reason, but it's not the only reason I'm not considering surgery. And I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you um, the kind of front row seat that I've had working with people in pain uh, to what surgery does to some people. So there are some amazing surgeons out there. I have no doubt about it. There are some very successful surgeries out there. I have no doubt about that. But there are also some not so good surgeons or some surgeons that are maybe really good most of the time and then have a not so good day for whatever reason. I have worked with quite a few people who came to me with pain that was caused by a failed surgery or an accident that happened during surgery. So it's not uncommon for a surgeon to accidentally nick a nerve um, or nick an artery or um, leave, honestly, I mean, I hate to be the one to tell you this if you've never heard this before, this is terrifying to me. There are stories out there of pe surgeons or maybe not the surgeon, but one of the, the attending, you know, one of the, the people in the room with them leaving things like, you know, a, a, a cotton swab or a piece of gauze in your body and then it can rot and cut. I don't know. There's just like, I've heard so many stories, you guys, over the years of people who modern medicine failed and then they're in my office. And so I'm the one who gets to kind of clean up that mess and help this person when um, surgery failed them. So 
Uh, hearing that, you know, those stories doesn't give me any confidence really to, to look into it unless I knew for sure the surgeon was like, like one of the best. Um, and I don't have the money for that. I don't have the insurance to cover that. Uh, but also on my mind is the fact that I worked with a retired orthopedic surgeon in my private practice in Boulder who shared with me some inside information about how surgeons view surgery. And, you know, I'm not going to go crazy in depth on some of the stories he told me, but the, the thing that shocked me the most was that he said within um, the inner circle of, of surgeons talking among surgeons, like this, this is not something they tell patients, um, but it is common knowledge that surgeons consider a surgery 100% successful if the patient undergoes surgery and six months of PT as prescribed and isn't worse. That's the, that's, that is 100% success to them. So imagine that's like you, you get an A, like you get an A if you don't make people worse after the surgery and six months of PT. And so that, that, that's like, that's the highest they're hoping for. <laughs> um, and anything beyond that is probably considered, um, I don't know, like an anomaly worthy of celebration. Like, yes, you know, like I got someone, you know, beyond a hundred percent successful, right? Um, why do they consider this successful? Because a lot of surgeries fail because a lot of people, like a lot of people get worse. A lot of people are in worse shape. A lot of people are in more pain. A lot of people have a successful surgery by the objective measurements of a surgeon's imaging capacity or the ability to look, you know, look at what they did and go, yep, it was a successful surgery. We repaired the tendon or the ligament or we repaired whatever, the disc. But the person is still suffering and the person might even feel way worse, right? Why? Well, surgery is a trauma to the body. Surgery, you know, when, you, when you're getting cut open, it doesn't matter if you're anesthetized, if you're asleep, your body's still aware that you're in there and that something bad is happening. Um, so surgery is a trauma. You can tighten up. You're gonna have to deal with scar tissue. You're gonna have to do the PT. The PT is gonna suck. So, you know, these aren't the things that people tell you when you prepare for surgery. What I kind of wish surgeons would tell people when a patient is considering surgery is, especially something like this, right, where the surgery isn't 100% necessary, um, I wish they would actually say, there's a chance you could get worse. There's a chance you could be in more pain than you were before. There's a chance that you won't be able to cope with the amount of stiffness and pain and, you know, range of motion issues that you're going to deal with having gone through surgery. There's a chance that if you don't deal with that and do the prescribed PT anyway, you won't regain function. Um, there's a chance, you know, like there's actually a lot. Um, we're going to put you on pain medication. You might get addicted to the pain medication. Then you might have to come off of it and deal with withdrawals, right? There's just so many things um, that aren't discussed pre-surgery, in my opinion. Um, I think way too many people think of surgery as kind of this magical um, thing that we have available to us that can just fix us, you know? And I can tell you from experience, I have worked with so many people that surgery failed. So it's not a, a, a magical fix. It's not um, doctors are not omnipotent. They don't just put us back together and everything's okay. Uh, there's a lot that goes with it. Even in a best case scenario, um, there's a lot that you're going to have to deal with if you undergo surgery. Um, so would I ever, ever, ever get surgery? Of course, I'm going to get surgery if I'm in a catastrophic accident or I sever a limb or I sever an artery or I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's uh, a circumstance under which I would say, yes, please take me to the hospital, um, you know, because there is uh, a place for that, in my opinion. Um, but to me, it's a last resort option, especially when 
uh, my body can heal even a full rupture. So why do I feel like it might be fully ruptured? Um, when I fell into the river and twisted my knee, I stayed in the river and was just kind of stunned a little bit in shock, freaking out a bit, thinking, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Why'd I do that? It was just a bear. Um, and, and then I got the instinct to like move my leg a little bit in the water. And as I was moving my leg, just kind of bending and straightening it a bit, um, I definitely felt it like, like popping, uh, as if the condyle was rubbing, um, something it shouldn't. <laughs> so it felt disconnected. Like my lower leg felt disconnected from my upper leg, but only on the inside. So that was a very weird feeling. Um, and it, it might not mean it's fully torn. I really have no idea how to measure that. Uh, but it's just, just something I think about. So I actually think it's a potentially beneficial thing to consider the worst case scenario and then make a decision based on it anyway, right? So worst case scenario here for me is, yep, I have a fully ruptured MCL. Maybe I have other tears, it's possible. You know, I could have torn my meniscus or um, the ACL. However, I feel pretty stable. Like my knee feels really stable other than on the inside. So it feels stable laterally. It feels stable um, in the middle of my, my knee joint. And it just simply feels un very, very, very unstable on the inside. And I can't twist a certain way without pain. So um, I'm letting my body talk to me for now. That's why I'm not going to get surgery. Um, I also think it's probably worth mentioning that we often hear stories about professional athletes or famous people getting surgery and coming back better than ever. But let me assure you, they have access to the best surgeons out there probably, uh, the best physical therapists, and not only physical therapists, they're probably getting um, <clears throat> you know, massages and uh, nutritionists and, you know, the best rehab with like water therapy and all, you know, like ele electrical stimulation, whatever, like whatever, literally like the best thing you can get. Um, and most of us humble citizens of the world don't have access to those kinds of technology or that extensive of a team of people to help us heal. Uh, so if you are you know, forced to choose, you know, for me, if I got surgery, it would, I'd have to pay out of pocket for one thing. And then I'd have to pay for the physical therapy, um, forget getting massages or, you know, anything extraneous. Um, I'd rather not do those things and pay right now for possibly, um, massage therapy if I need it getting access to a saltwater pool or some kind of water um, or setting something up in our house here or you know, maybe buying a sauna. Like if I'm gonna invest money, I'm gonna invest in things like that or um, potentially uh, some kind of stem cell therapy or my own stem cells or potentially platelet um, rich plasma, like taking my own blood out and then spinning it and then injecting it back into my knee. All that kind of stuff I'm interested in, I'm curious about and it's worth investing in way more to me than surgery. So um, I hope that answers your, answers your question. Um, but I also uh, hope it's informative for those of you who maybe weren't even wondering, right? Um, but maybe it's given you some food for thought about considering surgery for your own body. I'm not a doctor and this is not advice. Just to be clear, I'm simply sharing with you why I'm making the decisions I'm making, sharing some of the stories about what's informing that decision. And I think the more we can share with each other personal experience and stories like this, the more informed we get and then we can make good decisions for ourselves. So I hope you found this useful. If you wanna share a takeaway, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Maybe share this with anyone you think might benefit if they are considering surgery, just to hear a different perspective. Uh, and as always, I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you next time.